OpenAI just announced GPT-40 Mini. They refer to it as their most cost-efficient small model. There have been a few small language models that have been recently released, such as Gemini Flash and also Cloud Haiku from Anthropic. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to go through the details of this GPT-40 mini announcement, and we're also going to take GPT-40 mini for a spin. I'm going to try it on a few interesting tasks, so stay tuned for that. So they announced this GPT-40 mini as their most cost-efficient small model. The use of small language models can be used in many areas, such as converting on structured data to structured data. You can also use these models for analyzing, for instance, like email threads, which is something that I mentioned, and doing these kind of niche tasks. So I'm going to go through the details more in depth here and then go through some examples uh, of where GPT-4 Mini actually shines. So they mentioned here that GPT-4 Mini will significantly expand the range of applications built with AI because it's making very intelligent systems much more affordable and accessible for more companies and more developers. They mentioned here GPT-40 Mini scores 82% on MMLU. As we know, MMLU is one of the popular benchmarks that tries to measure reasoning capabilities. So this is the score that they get, and they also compare this with other models. But I mentioned here that it currently outperforms their GPT-4 on the chat preferences in the LMSYS leaderboard. So there is an LMSYS leaderboard, very popular. I can show you here the LMSYS leaderboard where GPT mini actually drops. So it's right here. We can see that Gemini 1.5 Pro is still better than these models. We have the Sonnet models, which is a larger version of the Cloud 3.5 model as well. We have Gemini Advanced up here, and then we have GPT-4 Turbo. And as I mentioned, they do outperform GPT-4 right that's stated here they also outperform cloud tree opos which is also a very powerful model and you can see that it also outperforms gemini 1.5 flash so let's go back right here and something that they mention is that they are pricing this at 15 cents per million input tokens and 60 cents per million output tokens and they mentioned that this is 60% cheaper than GPT 3.5 Turbo. Now, I like the chart that they used in their announcement here from the OpenAI developers account. It really tells you the story of how this is getting cheaper, right? 60% cheaper than GPT 3.5 Turbo. So last year, March 2023, we can see that GPT 3.5 Turbo is $2 for 1 million tokens. And this, by the way, is showing a blended price, assuming 80% input tokens and 20% output tokens. Here in July, we have GPT-40 Mini, which is 0 0.24 for 1 million tokens. You can see that huge reduction in price, right? And that's what they're showing here. I think this is remarkable that in a little over a year, we can have these very performant models and how the price is just dropping for these systems. And I expect that this is the case for the other LLMs from other LLM providers as well. It makes these models way more affordable. You can use them in your applications or it actually pushes developers to think more deeply about how to incorporate these smaller models. It says here, GPT-4 Mini enables a broad range of tasks. It's low cost and latency enables applications that chain or parallelize multiple model calls, calling multiple APIs, for instance. So I, I would say like function calling, maybe building assistance as well. Um, and maybe chaining operations. And it says that you can pass a large volume of context to the model as well, such as a full code base or conversation history, as I mentioned, the assistant use case. You can interact with customers through fast real-time text responses, such as customer support chatbots. So all of these use cases are things that they have studied, and they have also partnered with a few companies to study where GPT-4 or Mini actually shines. It says here it supports text and vision in the API. So there's also vision capabilities that support it. I'm going to show you an example of that in a bit in the Playground because it's available in the Playground as well. So the context window of this model is 128K tokens. It supports up to 16K output tokens per request and has knowledge up to October 2023. 
It has an improved tokenizer shared with GPT-40 handling non-English text is not even more cost effective. So this is another trend that I'm seeing, the use of more efficient tokenizers. If you have been tracking the Mishral announcements, they also announced one of their smaller models where they are using this faster tokenizer. This is talking about performance and some results that they get from academic benchmarks, such as those for textual intelligence and multimodal reasoning. So down here, it summarizes how it's performing. Well, at least the GPT-40 mini. And GPT-40 obviously is the bigger model. You can see the performance difference here. So the one in orange is the mini one, and the one in O is the original one. But they mention that their mini model outperforms their GPT 3.5 Turbo. So this is what I was interested to check for all the different benchmarks that I have here. The reasoning benchmarks, the maths benchmark, the code generation benchmarks, and so forth. This blue one here, Turquoise, is the GPT 3.5 Turbo. You can see the huge difference in that performance, right? And obviously we have this model that's a lot faster. It's a lot cheaper as well. I believe that developers will be experimenting with these models, with this model in particular, this mini model, and probably will be moving over to this model because it's a lot more capable. But before you do that, make sure to experiment. These models are better at tasks such as extracting structured data from receipt files or generating high quality email responses when provided with thread history. We are actually gonna test this and to my surprise, it's actually really good at these tasks. But this is more about safety. Something that they mentioned here, which is interesting. They say that GPT-40 mini in the API is the first model to apply their instruction hierarchy method, which helps to improve the model's ability to resist jailbreaks, prompt injections, and system prompt extractions. So there's a lot of interesting work that's happening around researching adversarial prompting and how we can build defenses around those. So they highlight this paper here, which is this one here. And I think this is an interesting paper as well. So for those of you that are maybe working on red teaming and making models safer, I think there's a lot of insights here on how to potentially approach this issue of prompt injection. So what I mentioned here is that they essentially teach a model to be selectively ignore lower privilege instructions. So they ensure this hierarchy in instructions. There are instructions that are more important. Once you kind of establish that and the model understands that, you know, you can figure out a way to prevent these types of attacks more easily. Something that's really exciting for me, at least, is the fine tuning part. So there's going to be fine tuning that's coming soon for GPT-40 Mini as well. As soon as that comes out, I'll be testing this because I do use OpenAI to fine tune a lot of my models. And so I'm curious about that, how this particular model can be fine tuned, if it's the fine tuning is a lot faster, more efficient. They mentioned here developers pay 15 cents per 1 million input tokens and 60 cents per 1 million output tokens. And this is roughly the equivalent of 2,500 pages of a standard book. That's incredible. And one thing they note here is the cost per token of GPT-40 Mini has dropped by 99% since their Thex Da Vinci 003, which is a model they deprecated already. I'm gonna go through a few examples using the playground. So the first example that I have here is this email thread. So they mentioned that this is one use case that they saw a lot of potential in using the GPT-40 Mini. So I actually took another model generated an email thread, and then I prompted this model here at the bottom to generate the email. So I'm actually tasking it with generating a response to the last email in the following email thread. This entire thing is the email thread. I could definitely fix that, maybe put a bit of delimiters for clarity, but I'm just gonna skip that. So I'm gonna run, it, run this. From the last email, apparently, Alex was telling Sarah that it would be helpful if they could prepare an, inter an overview of the Q2 performance and initial thoughts on Q3 goals. So when I read the response from Sarah to Alex now, she's saying, yes, I'll make sure to prepare an overview of our Q2 performance and some preliminary thoughts on our Q3 goals. It sounds like a solid agenda, and I'm looking forward to hearing your insights on the budget and potential new marketing channels. So this is something that was mentioned, by the way, by Alex in the previous thread. So he said, I'll review our budget projections and bring some ideas about potential new marketing channels we might explore. Okay, you can see it there. 
And so then she closes out with, I'll send out the calendar invite shortly. See you on Wednesday. So this is really amazing because now you can use these models to sort of generate or auto-generate emails, which will unlock a lot of applications, not only for like email generation, but also like conversation understanding. Because I think conversation understanding is something that's useful when you are building these assistants. And the fact that this model can look at these longer contexts and generate text like this, I think can unlock a better and more reliable assistance. The next example is a bit more exciting. So there is support for vision with this model and it's available in the playground already. So I will take this receipt right here and I've actually put it right here already. I couldn't save this because you cannot save this preset if it has an image, but you can just upload the image or copy paste it right here and then just uh, tell the model extract the important bits from this receipt. I have done that already. In fact, I'll just run it again. So here is the information it sent me. So business name, business address. So we can look back at the business name. So this is the business name and this is the business address. Uh, that looks accurate, especially the numbers is what I'm looking at specifically if it gets it right, it looks okay. And then name and address 12,210 to port square. Okay, that looks correct. It looks like it's doing this segmentation, which is really nice, right? It's structuring everything really well. From here, it's easy to convert this into something like JSON. I'm going to look at the last parts here with the items. That's really important. So receipt total is $145, $145. Items, front and rear brake cables. Okay, that looks okay. Quantity, quantity says one. Unit price, 100. Unit price, 100. Okay, so the amount is going to be 100. That looks okay. The same with new set of pedal arms. New set of pedal arms, two. 15 and 30, the two, 15, okay, and the amount is 30. And then finally, we have the labor, which is gonna be three hours, right? Three hours of, okay, quantity three, that looks okay, five and 15. So everything looks perfect. And, you know, this particular receipt looks like a typical receipt. It'd be interesting to see if you can test a receipt that is not in good shape and see how it performs. So maybe making it a little bit more challenging would be interesting. The next one is interesting because they do mention that this particular model has been trained explicitly to perform function calling as well. So what I've done here is I've actually added a function. So this function in particular is get HN, which is Hacker News Post. I'm going to copy a bunch of links and comments and something that I have copy pasted from the front page of Hacker News. And I want this model to return a list of structured Hacker News posts. And I define all the different properties that I expect the model to be able to extract from this particular set of Hacker News posts that I'm going to provide it. So I'm going to now cancel this. I've showed you the function. I've added the function here. And now I task it with your task is to extract important information from the provided text. I give it the copy pasted Hacker News post. So there's one here, there is two, and each one of these would include like the points, it would include the user, it would say uh, one hour ago, flag hide, right? I'm just copy pasting directly from those pages. So the idea is to convert something that looks very unstructured to something that's more structured with this function calling capability. So this is a test that I love to do. Um, I always go and copy from like web pages and then just try to see if function calling actually works with these models. So I'm gonna run this, now oh, here we go. So what it does in the interface, very interesting. So it does provide information about the function call, uh, but you can see it more clearly here what it actually does. So as part of the arguments, it's providing this information right here. So this list of objects on all those posts that we have provided. So you can see all of them here. And then it needs to present it right here. So we get one, two, three, four, five. And we can confirm that that's correct because we have five different posts here. Right. So the fifth one, for instance, have 103 comments. We can see the fifth one here, 103 comments. So it's nicely structured for you. You can see it visually what it's doing and you can keep testing this. So something I actually tested was, I tested a few more of these. So I had like 2025, but for some reason I was getting server error. I'm not sure if this is a bug or 
some limitation of the playground or the function calling capabilities. So I'm going to be testing that a bit more because I want to do some more extensive testing with function calling. So just keep that in mind if it doesn't work out for you. Anyways, that will be it for this particular video. I think this is an exciting announcement. This is a very powerful model. The trend of having more cost-efficient models is something I'm following very closely. I'll be doing a series of videos on smaller language models and how you can use them, how we are using them in our projects as well, how you can experiment with them, some of the capabilities that might be interesting for you. For instance, if you want to use them in a RAG setting, how to fine tune them better, or even use them in like agentic workflows. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. See you in the next one.